Today's show is all about saving lives. We talked about choking, seizures, and now we're talking CPR. All right, here's the scenario. You're sitting in the living room with your dad. He suddenly complains of chest pain, shortness of breath, discomfort in the areas of the upper body, and then he collapses on the floor. What do you do? Well, we have Brian Benson with us back to give us the step-by-step -step instructions for these common emergency situations. Mm -hmm. So yes. did, did I set it up correctly? Is, it that, up is that how it happens? Yes. Okay. That's what happens, right? Yep. And then all of a sudden, what do we do? Now what do we do? Sure. Yeah. Besides so, freak out. Yeah. Don't, so stay calm. Okay. Don't freak out. N number one. <laughs> okay. Don't. don't. <laughs> number one. So if you are in a scenario where you're not at home, where you may be out in public or in a work environment, first thing, just to make sure that everything's safe, um, it's easy to get tunnel vision when something like that happens. Right. Just take a quick second, make sure that there's nothing obvious that's hazardous. You're not um, in the road. Exactly. Okay. Anything like that. Good point. Um, the next thing, if it's safe to approach, we're going to come up and we're going to see if he's responsive. So we tap on his shoulder and yell at him, see if we can get him to respond to us. Okay. If he's not responsive, you're going to call 911, or if you have somebody that's around, preferably, you can say, you know, can you call 911 for yeah. me? And if there's also an AED, wherever you are, you can grab an AED. Um, you see those a lot in right. malls, um, schools, things like that. Right. Have them bring that back to you also. I've heard, um, don't just say, somebody call 911, right. because then people are like, you're going to do it, right? And then mm -hmm. other people just assume it's going to be somebody else. Yes. Good point. So Good like, point. point to somebody. Yes. Okay. Say, so you, you know, you, point in you're the one. Okay. I need you to call 911 and bring me an AED. Okay. Okay. Got it. All right. So, so now next? we assess the situation, right? Mm -hmm. All yep. right. So if it's safe for us to approach, he's not responsive. Somebody's called 911. The next thing we need to assess if the person's breathing or not. So we can do this real quick by just looking at their chest mm -hmm. and their abdomen. And we can also, if you want to lean down, you can listen for breaths okay. and see if that person's breathing normally or not. Okay. okay. They're not. They're not. Okay. Mike is not Mike moving. is not breathing. So no. if they're unresponsive, not breathing, that's when we need to start CPR. Okay. So if you've taken a formal CPR training, you've been taught to do 30 compressions and two rescue breaths. Right. If you don't have um, an actual formal certification, right. um, you can always just do chest compression only CPR. Okay. They so, say that that's effective because yes. that okay. gets that blood circulating exactly. to the brain. Okay. So, All right. So how do we do that? So yeah. we're going to take our hands, put them in the middle of our friend's chest here. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. You're going to lean over his chest, lock your elbows, mm -hmm. and you're going to push down about two inches and you're going to do that 100 to 120 times a minute. So it works out to about two compressions every second. So okay. it'll look like this. Staying alive. Staying Stay alive. alive. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell. Okay. <laughs> okay, so we do um, mm -hmm. how many of those? So if you're doing just chest compressions, yeah. you're going to start the chest compressions and you're going to keep doing those. You don't have to count. You don't have to keep track of how many you've done. Just keep doing do the them. chest compressions. Okay. And then you keep doing those until either the person responds, starts moving around. Right. Um, if an AED gets there, you can turn it on, follow those instructions, or someone else takes over for you, or EMS arrives. Okay, so you can do it, because I mean, I feel like you might get tired after a while, so you might be like, you, switch with me, your turn. Yeah, so if someone else is okay. available to do that, um, they Take say turns. about every two minutes mm -hmm. um, is an ideal time to switch compressors. Okay. But you also have that adrenaline rush in those situations yeah. that can help keep you going. Uh, for longer periods of time if needed. So sometimes are people doing this all the way up until like paramedics arrive? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay, okay, so it could be several minutes that mm -hmm. you're doing this without a response, but don't stop. Definitely. Don't okay. give up. Right, keep going. Keep on going, because yep. it really could mean matter of life Absolutely. and death. Now, can ribs be broken from doing chest compressions? Sure, you can break ribs. Um, but if their heart's term, beating, it's like, hey, congratulations. Exactly, this Sorry. person will take ribs. a broken rib any right. day. Okay. Life and a broken rib. Absolutely. And you teach classes periodically. We do. Check the website. It's mm -hmm. RoanokeCPR.com.